Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Hi everyone and welcome to Common Ground. I'm your host, Ashley Hall. Common Ground captures the creative process of various artists living throughout our region. Each week we delve into the veiled history of our area, plus we take you inside the cultural events that put the North in North Country. On this week's episode of Common Ground, you're bound to get hungry as we introduce you to Sharon Carlson of Brainerd, whose Norwegian heritage has an impact on the dishes that she cooks today. Plus, we visit a well-known food festival at the restaurant capital of the world, otherwise known as Dorset, and we sample some of the locals' best dishes at this year's Taste of Northern Minnesota in Bemidji. My name is Sharon Johnson Carlson. It would have been Sharon Johannesson if my grandfather hadn't changed his name as he emigrated from Norway to the United States in 1909. He was only 16 years old and I think of him leaving his family and his friends and getting on a small sailing ship and going across the ocean for probably four to six weeks and landing at Ellis Island, never to see his parents, his family, or his friends again. Going to a country where he did not know the language, traveling all the way to Jamestown, North Dakota, where my father was born. So it's quite a story to think about that immigration. A lot of people emigrated from Norway. It started in about 1825 when the first ship left from Stavanger. Norway was a small country, it's 125,000 uh, square miles, so it's about the size of New Mexico, but it's very long and skinny with lots of mountains, and the people were quite separated from one another. There were a couple of reasons why Norwegians came to the United States. Some of them came for religious freedom. The state church of Norway at that time was the Lutheran church, and so there were a number of Quakers who came over, like the Puritans did for religious freedom. But most of them were farmers. Norway has only 3% of their land that can be farmed, with the high mountains and the waters, the fjords, and the forest, um, you can imagine these small little farms in between the mountains, maybe a family of eight or 10 children, and of course the oldest son would get the farm when the parents died. And so then you had a number of people left wondering what they were going to do to make a living. So many of them left Norway. In the late 1800s, there were about uh, four million people who lived in Norway, and through the time of immigration, about one million of them left for the United States. Only Ireland had more of their population leave um, their country to uh, emigrate to the United States. Many of them, of course, were looking for farmland, and the Homestead Act in the late 1800s gave free farmland to many of the immigrants, so that was a good reason to come over. And of course, they settled where the good farmland was. But they tended to settle in small areas where they were either Swedish groups or German groups or Irish groups or Norwegian groups. I always think about my mother, who's now 93, went to kindergarten only speaking Norwegian, and yet her parents had never been to Norway. So they always spoke Norwegian in the home. When their friends came over, they spoke Norwegian, so she had to learn English when she went to school. I've been fortunate enough to be able to travel to Norway four times. I went over while I was a college student and worked one summer up in the mountains by Lillehammer in a place called Dalsetter Hoysfell Hotel. A couple of years ago, my four brothers and their families and I went back to Norway and had a family reunion in Kristiansand with our relatives. And my father never went back to Norway. My grandfather, once he came here, I, I doubt he wrote very often. And so at 16 years old, he kind of left the family. And I think it was just a thrill for them to be able to meet his descendants as it was a thrill for us to meet my grandfather's family. So it was a really great time for us. I grew up in a family where our Norwegian heritage was very important to us. And so when Christmas came along, we had the, uh, uh, the lefse and the lutefisk and the meatballs and the rice pudding with the almond in it and the krumkaka and the rosettes and um, all of those brumagrut, the wonderful things that my grandfather probably had when he was growing up at home in Christian Sun. Sittnamai comes along, which is our Norwegian National Independence Day, and that's always celebrated. I belong to a Norwegian literature study group and a Norwegian mu music appreciation group through Sons of Norway. I do lots of Norwegian cooking. The United States is the melting pot and I always like to think of us as 
not being like tomato soup, but by like being a stew where all of the pieces are separated, but they all come together to make a wonderful soup. I think all of the, the, the cultures and the heritage that came to the United States and made this the country that it is can blend together and respect each other's traditions and backgrounds and celebrate those and still be American, 100% American, but to, to keep that heritage alive. My philosophy on cooking is that cooking may be as much a means of self-expression as any of the arts. And while I'm not an artist with paint or clay, I certainly feel like I'm an artist with food. And a lot of that came from the summer that I spent working in Norway. Those of you who have Nordic background know that the Nordic food doesn't have a lot of color. You might have a white plate with white fish that just came out of the ocean, white potatoes that just came out of the soil, cauliflower, and it tastes absolutely wonderful. And if your eyes were closed, you'd think it was the best meal in the whole world, but it doesn't have a lot of color. They don't use a lot of red sauces. They don't use a lot of colorful cheeses. So they make their food look beautiful by doing garnishing. And we do eat not only with the taste buds that we have in our mouth, but we also eat with our eyes. So I learned a lot of my garnishing techniques when I was in Norway. Today, I'd like to show you how to make smøbrød. Smøbrød are open-faced sandwiches. And when you go to Denmark or Sweden or Norway, or Finland, and you go into the uh, restaurants, you are going to see absolutely beautiful examples of smøbrø. They're very simple and easy to make. They're very healthy to eat. And of course, it brings back that culture to me that's so important. You're only limited by your imagination and your taste when you make smøbrø. I remember being in Denmark a number of years ago, and we went to the Oscar Davidson restaurant. And here is the list of 178 different open face sandwiches that you could order. So use your imagination. You think about color, you think about shape, you think about texture, and you think about flavors when you put together your smørbrød. Smørbrød started in Denmark, they think in the Middle Ages, before they had plates. And then what they used was bread as their plate, and they'd put their meats and their cheeses and their vegetables on top of the bread. And it's said that even sometimes they didn't eat the bread and used it for the next day, just like you would a plate. But we do eat our bread. And the bread is the basis of the smøbrød. You have to have good bread to make it. It has to be a firm bread because you're going to build on top of that. In America, you take a slice of bread, you slap some peanut butter and jelly on it, you put another slice of bread on the top and you see the bread. But in smøbrød, you don't see the, be the bread at all. Smø means butter. Br means bread, so it's really buttered bread, but that's just the beginning of it. If you're a bread baker, I like to use my homemade bread when I do it, but I also go in, if I have to buy bread, I pick up the loaf and I find the heaviest, densest bread that I can. They generally use dark bread. When I do my shrimp ones, I like to use lighter bread. So this is a dark, whole grain, heavy bread, and this is an English muffin bread because it needs to hold everything that you put on top of it. So the bread is the basis. The next thing you're going to put on it is some kind of a mayonnaise or some kind of a sauce or mustard or whatever goes with whatever you're making. Then you have your lettuce that covers up your bread. And then you have your array of whatever you want to put on the top. You want to put flavors together that are going to taste good. So here's a quick and easy way of making smoothie. We'll start by making my absolutely favorite one. And for this one, I'm going to use white bread and I'm going to butter it. We always say that Scandinavians only use things so that they have an excuse to put butter on, but you're gonna butter the whole entire piece of bread. I like to make smaller smørbrød so people have a chance to eat more than one kind. So I've taken my bread. You can use any kind of bread you could use. Sometimes I use a little cocktail rye bread and make really small ones where they can have lots of different uh, choices. I've cut off the crust and I'm ready to make my smaller smørbrød. So I have my butter on. Then I'm going to make egg and tomato, so I'm going to use mayonnaise for that, just plain mayonnaise. So I'm going to put some mayonnaise. You put the butter on so that the mayonnaise doesn't soak into the bread, so it's kind of a barrier between your mayonnaise and your bread. Then we want to cover up our bread. I was taught that you shouldn't see the bread when you make your smoebre, so different people have different ideas. So I'm going to use a leafy lettuce that I've cleaned, and I'm going to cover my bread now this again is my favorite one and my 
Friends in Norway were always surprised about this because this is the cheapest and easiest one to make. I'm going to use egg and tomato because I love both of those flavors. And I'm going to use uneven numbers because in art you often use uneven numbers. Then I'm going to put a small blob of mayonnaise, small piece of mayonnaise on the top of that. And I'm going to add a little bit more color by putting in a little bit of parsley. And I'll put a little salt and a little bit of pepper on top of that. And there's your first open-faced sandwich, your first smoebre. You just think about how you would eat it if it weren't on a piece of bread. What would you eat on a roast beef sandwich? And we're making a roast beef sandwich like you might get at the Subway shop, only it's just really pretty to look at. So, okay, um, the last one I think I'm going to make is um, a turkey, and I'll use the dark bread again. So we'll start by buttering all the way to the edges. Not a lot of butter, but just to make sure that bread doesn't dry out and that the sauce doesn't get on it. These are very simple ones. You can make homemade sauces. You can, I've seen them with raw eggs. I've seen them with uh, herring. Um, I've tasted lots and lots of wonderful ones. Okay, I'm going to use regular mayonnaise on this one because I don't want the horseradish with my turkey. So I'll use regular mayonnaise. Okay, again, we cover the bread with the lettuce. You see how healthy these are? I mean, these are fresh, this is fresh vegetables, very, very healthy. I'm going to take my turkey and I'm just gonna kind of just roll these a little bit. You can do whatever you want with them. And then, ah, uh, Norwegians love pickled beets. So I'm gonna add a little color. Remember, we don't have a lot of color in our food over there. So I'm gonna add some pickled beets over here. You could add tomatoes for color cucumbers, whatever you wanted. I'll put a little pickled beets over there. And we will take and put one on this side, balance it out a little bit. Then I'm going to take my cucumbers. Let's see, oh, what goes well with turkey? Cheese goes well with turkey. So let's take a little bit of cheese. Put some cheese in between. Okay, uh, you can put tomatoes, you can put all different kinds of things with that. I'm gonna take three. Um, I think the important thing to remember also when doing open face sandwiches is that everything is sliced very thinly. So I'm gonna take my th three thin slices of cucumbers and I'm gonna twist those on the top like that. Still needs a little more color, doesn't it? Let's see, let's put a little, you can't go wrong by having tomatoes on something. Let's put a tomato on the top of that, like that. The color. I'm gonna put a little bit more mayonnaise on the top. A little more flavor. A little bit of salt. Parsley, there's lots of parsley on the top of that. And there you have your turkey sandwich. Aren't they beautiful? And they taste as good as they look. Now, I'm gonna show you a little trick over here about what I used as when I was working in Norway they used this as a garnish a lot because again they needed to put color on their um, plates because the brown meat and the white potatoes lots of food um, traditions come from the topography of the country and because Norway has only three percent of cultivated land um, they grew a lot of potatoes because you can grow a lot of potatoes in a small area. Sometimes they have potatoes three and four times a day. They also have a lot of fish because they are a coastal country. Oops, one more. There we go. Pull that apart. I'll cut the bottom off a little bit so that it sits straight. I'm going to put that in the middle of our sandwiches. We're going to put a little prune, or you could put a piece of parsley, but look at the, the contrast in the colors there. And there's your smoother plate. 
Smurbrer are good to eat anytime because the flavors are so great, but they're wonderful in the summer when you can go to your own garden or go to the farmer's market and get your fresh lettuce and your fresh tomatoes and your fresh vegetables. Um, now I'm going to show you how to eat it. Again, I love to do this to entertain because it's so easy to do beforehand. You could make these up and you could have them in the refrigerator for a number of hours before people came and just present this gorgeous plate of open face sandwiches or smoother to your guests. But they do have to eat them in the correct way. So we're going to serve my favorite one, the egg and tomato, on my whole Norwegian plate. And I'm going to serve that. I often like to serve that with cold apple soup. So we will pour some cold apple soup in here. It's just a nice refreshing flavor, especially in the spring and summer. We'll put a little cinnamon stick to add some color to that. And we're going to eat this in the, in the um, European or continental way. Those of you who have traveled over to Europe know that this is the way most people over there eat their food. Um, it would be very difficult to pick this up with your hand and eat it, you'd have it all over your, yourself, I'm afraid. But when I went over to Norway to work, it was interesting because the people I worked with were all Norwegian and they laughed a lot at how I would take my knife and my fork and I would cut a piece of meat because my father told us you only cut one at a time, put down the knife, take the fork, eat the piece, put the fork in the left hand, pick up the knife, eat another piece. They put their knife in their right hand, pointed down their finger, they put their fork in their left hand down and they never put them down through the whole meal. It makes so much sense. When you start doing this, your chin is about two inches from the plate because you can't get everything up. But I watched people put potatoes and peas and gravy and meat and everything and get that all the way up to their mouth. And once you get the hang of eating like this, you don't want to go back to the other way. So again, you take your food like this you take a piece of your sandwich and you cut off one piece like this and you build that up on your fork and then you bring it to your mouth and you eat and then when you're done with that one again you keep your knife and fork in your hand and you continue eating through your sandwich like that so it's a great way to eat and it makes a lot of sense so I would say to you if I was French bon appetit if I was Norwegian, which I am, I would say, you must come and eat now, and um, please try making some of these sandwiches. I think you'll really enjoy it, and use your creativity. Mangatak. Thanks for joining us on Common Ground. We're at the Taste of Northern Minnesota. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these vendors have to offer. We're now at the Keg and Cork table with Mitch. Radio. Radio. Radio, yep. And um, he has two soups today as the Hungarian mushroom and the turkey pepper jack. Which is your favorite? Ooh, I would have to say it, Hungarian mushroom. Okay. I just started making the turkey pepper jack. Okay. Because we're going to actually start making our own, cooking our own turkeys. And so I thought I might as well start making the soup too. Okay. So what goes into the Hungarian mushroom that makes it the keg and corks? The dill and paprika really give it the flavor. The um, garlic and onions and everything just melt. Okay. It's really good. Now we're joining Mackenzie at Harmony Co-op Natural Foods booth. And you guys said you've been doing this. This is your first year. But you're here because you've been working in dairy and you guys have some cheeses here today. Yes. OK. And is everybody enjoying the cheese? Yes, absolutely. What do you guys have? Well, we've brought two of our, our staples in our artisan cheese lines. Um, we brought the Prairie Breeze Cheddar, which is made in Iowa. Uh, it's made by the Musser family. Um, they buy their milk from very small farms. Um, and then we also brought our Feeny Cheddar, which is made in Wisconsin, brought over to Minnesota, um, and aged in the caves in Fairbolt. It's, it's really crispy, fruity, crunchy, light, delicious cheddar. Fruity. Fruit, slightly fruity, slightly really fruity. awesome with beer, okay. really awesome with apples. Um, and then we're also featuring the Feeny cheddar, which is the really deep orange colored one. Okay. It's made in Wisconsin. They bring it to Fairbolt, Minnesota, and they age it in um, the blue cheese caves. It hangs out for most of its life with a bunch of blue cheeses. And so it kind of soaks up a little bit of that dank cavey, rich flavor. It makes the best cheese sauce okay. ever. <laughs> I like both of them. 
They're both winners yep. in my book. Cool. Thanks, Mackenzie. Both cheddars, <laughs> completely different. Yeah, they're awesome. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Jeremy is joining us now, who is the head chef at the Bemidji Country Club. Jeremy, thank you so much for talking to us. Absolutely. And what do you guys have on display here today? We have a walleye brandade on a shredded wheat triscuit cracker drizzled with a little truffle oil, a prime rib and horseradish canapé, and a shrimp and cracked pepper aioli canapé, and chocolate truffles. Okay, so the chocolate truffles are amazing. Why are they so amazing? Tell me about it. Chocolate and cream, you can't go wrong with that. They're delicious. Took all the calories out of them. Um, they're just, they're wonderful. You did, all right. Well, if you've taken all of the calories out of them, I'm gonna go ahead and have to try it. Mmm. Okay, so Angela, this is your first taste of Northern Minnesota, and you put on this event all by yourself. <laughs> yeah, with the help of my wonderful volunteers. I really could not have done it without them. I am indebted to them, because I was kind of running around not really knowing what to do, but they've taken me under their wings, so. So what do you think this event does for a community and the members of the community? You know, you, all, you taste food, but it's also networking. You meet different people, different vendors, because a lot of them are distributors, you know, and caterers. So it's a good way to meet new people. So if you didn't make it to the taste this year, be sure to get your tickets early next year and make it to this fabulous event. I've had it for a long time, but that's all you can eat. And I've got some fantastic reds here on site tonight. Harmony Natural, Natural Foods Co-op. They've got some fantastic This is our annual Taste of Dorset. It's always the first Sunday of August. Um, Everyone comes out. There's food on both sides of the town. We've got, well, right here we've got taquitos, popcorn chicken, popcorn walleye, mud balls, margaritas. Every place has their own unique stuff. And everybody comes out. I mean, the whole, if you look, the whole street's lined with people. It's just crazy. My name is Zach Buckner. I'm from Coon Rapids, Minnesota, enjoying this wonderful day. I consider this the Northern Minnesota State Fair, and it's every bit as good as, as it is. I'm Alyssa. I also come from Coon Rapids, and I come here every year to enjoy some great food, great, great sights, you know, all these people here. It's a great gathering. My wife has been coming up here since she was eight years old. My wife is 55, so 30, 47 years uh, she's been coming up here, and since we've been married, uh, we've been coming up here for 28 years, every year, coming up to Big Sand Lake, fishing, golfing, lying on the beach. It's just amazing how all the people come out and everyone's together and it all comes together. I mean, there was nothing here at nine o'clock this morning and now everything's going and everything's working right. I'm a native of um, California that moved to Minnesota and loves it. I live in Nevis. We come to the Taste of Dorset every year because this is a great place to not only see people you haven't seen in a while, but to taste all of the food. It's just, um, it's just a lot of fun. We find a place in the shade and watch the people go by. Favorite part is just getting here, tasting all the food. You got some home cooked Minnesota walleye popcorn. Uh, you got turtle sundae from the famous Dorset house. And just coming here and playing the games, trying to win a couple prizes and going home happy. You can get a little bit of everything from Dorset. You've got, I mean, you've got different countries of the world represented. You've got your Mexican, you've got your American, you've got your Italian, you've got anything you could want. And all kinds of people, it's just an awesome time. Come on out and enjoy it. You got the prime rib sandwiches, you know, succulent prime rib marinated all day yesterday. And then the La Pasta line, you got the turtle sundae, which is my favorite dessert here. Uh, you got the corn of the cob with your choice of kosher or regular salt. You got uh, Mexican mud balls, the famous uh, uh, compañeros item there. I love the Mexican food. I just had a taco, just had a taco. And then uh, last year we had some of the uh, Italian food. So we try to switch from one year to the next because I get too full. The pork chops down at the end on the stick are absolutely wonderful. My favorite food here is Mexican mud ball. Nothing beats it. It's the best. The popcorn walleye is going great this year. That and the taquitos, we just can't keep them on the table. They're gone as soon as we get them out here. I come here for the ice cream, for all the food, just for all the people. It's a great get together. If I wanted somebody to come to Dorset, and we have brought many people before, I tell them the food is great, the prices are good, the people are fun to watch, and the weather's perfect. You can't have it any better than that. 
helped out. You know, we, we should spread the word on this to show more people, you know, we don't just say, oh yeah, and sit and home cook. We know how to have a, a get together, a block party in Minnesota too. Taste the set is always something we look forward to ever since our kids used to shoot basketballs and we sit around, have fun. Think about the Dorset house, La Pasta are some of our favorites. Everyone should come to this. I mean, we've got plenty of space, plenty of food. The prices are reasonable, probably half the price of the State Fair or a Taste of Minnesota in St. Paul. So I think everyone should just come up here, enjoy the Great Lakes up here, enjoy the great setting and the great people. I think people should come here to see it, to see just all the people getting together in northern Minnesota. I mean, it's a small town, population of about two people. The <laughs> economy is like 2,000 people or more, so it's pretty great to see that. Fun, food, and one day of the best food you could ever have. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed the show and we look forward to seeing you next week right here on Common Ground. If you have a segment idea for Common Ground pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. To view this episode or any Common Ground segment, visit us at lptv.org backslash common ground. individual segments or copies of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, Contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.